everyone, welcome to Sheriff's for Horror and Supreme. Today I am joined by Russell Todd to discuss his character in Friday the 13th Part 2. Um, so welcome to the channel. Thank you, Shay. It's good to be here. Appreciate it. Yeah, um, so your character in that movie, it was kind of um, a prankster and all of that. Was he sort of um, developed off of your own personality or was it just the like actual character? Well, I think he was well written to be a prankster, which was great. And I just added, you know, a bit of my own personal prankishness, I guess, you know, that I enjoyed through my life and uh, kind of combined the two and uh, and created Scott. But um, he was de he was well defined as, as a prankster already in the script. Yeah. Um, talking just like pre movie and all of that. How were you actually able to, to like get the role? Did you know a few of the people who worked on it or was it just through like agents and all of that? No, actually with that one, um, I believe I saw it in Backstage, which is a publication for actors. And I saw the audition and um, I, I don't truly remember if I had my agent in New York or not at that point. Either I went on it my own or the agent submitted me and I got called in. And I was very excited because I had seen the first one and like most people, I enjoyed it. And it was going to be, you know, a cool thing, a kick to, to be part of a sequel to it. So I auditioned uh, for Steve Miner and the casting director. And I believe it was just that one day I, I think I got the role. You know, I heard in the next day or so that it was mine. So uh, I was very excited. And then we all packed up all a bunch of young actors and headed up from New York City up to up to Kent, Connecticut, uh, where we shot the picture. Yeah, um, I believe that's also where they shot the first one. But um, just quickly speaking of that one, um, so were you, you said you were a big fan of it. Did you like, well, were you expecting Jason to be the killer in this movie before you got the script for it? Or were you just sort of like, I don't know, maybe Pamela comes back somehow or something? Yeah, I guess... You know, I didn't know before I got the script. I didn't know what to expect, quite honestly. But of course, then we knew it was going to be Jason who was who was the killer. Um, uh, but uh, still, uh, I mean, it worked out great. I mean, it, it was wonderful, and we were all very excited to do the project. Yeah. Well, what what, what would you say it was um, exactly like um, filming? Um, for the film, how many days did you actually shoot um, the project? It varied depending on the character. For me, I think I was up in Connecticut uh, about three weeks. So it was pretty quick for me. And, you know, we were on an actual camp. It was not the same one as part one. Part one was at a Boy Scout camp, which has a real name, Obi Scoby or something like that. It's a real strange name uh, in Pennsylvania. It's either on the yeah. border of Jersey or Pennsylvania or somewhere in there. And that's where they filmed the first one. But this one was Kent, Connecticut. And um, it was, you know, we would try to scare each other constantly after shooting because we were shooting a lot in that main lodge that you see. And then we'd have to walk down this long path with tall pine trees and the moon out uh, to get back to our uh, our cabins where we were staying, individual cabins. So, you know, you'd be walking down that path and you'd hear, kill, 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 kill. You know, someone in the crew trying to scare the hell out of you. And they would, even though you know that you just shot a scene with Jason down the, down the road there and he's not real. But uh, you would get scared and, um, you know, because you're out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, but it was, yeah. it was a wonderful time. We were all young. We were all pretty much starting off our careers. And, um, and it was exciting to uh, to be working together and doing a sequel to a project, not knowing that it would have such an impact on people and have such legs and just continue and continue and become such a popular franchise. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah, well, I mean, so you guys didn't expect um, the movies to be as big of a success as they were then? No, you never know. You know, when you're making a movie, a TV series, anything, you just, you're, you're there for the shoot and you just, you know, you, you do your best work and you hope the project comes out great, but you have no idea if it's going to really be a success and, and, and continue on for years and years and years. I mean, that's just a pot of gold and um, you just, you don't, I mean, when you do a project, you're not thinking about that. You're just, you know, wanting this project to be a good one. Yeah. Um, 
Well, when because I know sometimes I do this, but when you first got to um, play the character, did you know that your character was going to die, or were you uh, not told that yet? I knew it. Uh, yeah, they told me the character was going to die. So, and that was fine. I had died almost the exact same way in a film prior to that called He Knows You're Alone, where I'm in the in a car with a girl in the back of the, in the back of the car. We're making out and she hears a little something outside. She goes, go out and check it out. So I said, come on, let's just get back to kissing. And she goes, no, check it out. And um, I go outside and then she hears a little clicking and and she's saying my name and, and she gets out of the car and I'm hanging upside down above the car with a slit throat and my ring is hitting the top of the car causing that, causing that noise. So it's funny that, you know, I got cast in Friday the 13th part two uh, and I die upside down with a slit throat. So hmm, I wonder if that was, um, you know, the thought that I, I do that well, I don't, I'm not sure, but, but it's an interesting coincidence. Yeah. Uh, I mean, do you think maybe like another reason that you got the role was because maybe they saw that and they knew that you had prior experience to being able to, I guess, hang upside down for a while? Um, I don't think so, because I don't think they were aware of it uh, when we spoke. But getting to the upside down for a while, it really wasn't that bad, you know, because they had pre... I was wearing a foam latex piece here, so and that was pre-slit. But you couldn't tell until I threw my head back. And I had tubing going from that down my chest and down my leg. And uh, I was upside down, of course. And there was a guy up in a tree with a big canister pressured with, with you know, fake blood in it. And on the right cue, he would pump the blood and out it came. And, you know, then eventually into my eyes where they had to cuddle, you know, so you wouldn't see that part. Um, and uh, they had a guy that was holding my back up and my head. So most of the time I was not you know, 100% upside down. And I was, I was lifted up. So it wasn't, it really wasn't that bad. And, you know, and we wanted to, they wanted to do it in one take because of the mess and because of the amount of blood. And thankfully uh, we did get it in, in that one take. I mean, yeah, a lot of the time when people are hanging upside down, they do have to do um, prior experience. Like um, I was just filming the other day for a V video that I'm doing. And in the behind the scenes, um, the person who plays the character who has to hang upside down said that she'd sit upside down for 30 minute intervals to like practice. So uh, did you do something like that for the film or did you just like just no practice? No practice. It? No. <laughs> mm. You know, they told me that you know the effect would not be me upside down for a long time. So you know, someone would hold my back up in my head. So it, it was not difficult, really. You know, it was, it was exciting. That's all I felt. It was exciting. And, you know, it was exhilarating because I wanted to get it in one take when they told me we really need to do this and, and get it hopefully in one take. Um, so there was a little pressure there, but it all worked out fine. It's a shame that the sensors cut it so quickly once the blood started, started flowing. But in the, um, in yeah. the pack of all the uh, CDs together, there's some extra footage. And I believe in there... Um, it goes a little longer and you see it come into my eyes or at least further down my face. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that's sort of something which um, I believe it's called the MPAA in the States, but um, I'm pretty sure they just despise anything under the Friday the 13th name. They've got like a vendetta against them because every film in the Friday the franchise there's always like a kill which has just been cut down way too much. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's well, I mean, and, not, and it's not that way in other uh, horror films? It's mostly you think they're out yeah. for the Friday franchise. Well, yeah, I mean, I watched this film the other day, and like you got um, someone's eye being taken out and blowtorch, but in your movie, it's just a bit of blood falling down. Yeah, I know, and and the amount of gore in, in most horror films today is just incredible. I mean, it's so so graphic. That uh, you never know, but that the what ours was only the second one. So at that time, I think the they were very very strict about what they wanted seen uh, in the theaters, and it would also change the rating dramatically. You know, I mean, I'm pretty sure at that point, I'm not sure if I am right here, but um, I was reading somewhere that at that time um, they were heavily backed by like religion and that, so they did kind of have to like look at things. And be like, no, this isn't really right. We can't really show this to people. Um, for religious reasons. Sorry. Is that what you said for religious reasons? Yeah, I, I, 
I can't remember, but I was I was reading it somewhere um on on like a history of like age ratings and stuff. Yeah, I mean, religion has always played an impact in people's lives. Not everybody, but some people. Uh, but I don't, I don't know if the motion picture, you know, that that the rating system was based on religion more than just what people could stomach. You know, as far as gore, violence, sex. You know how they rate movies or have always rated movies. So I think that more than than religion. I, I mean, if you read something that's interesting, I've never seen that uh, in print. That's that. That's how it was based on religion. But I think it was more just you know to what degree it would disturb people, just based on um, you know them as human beings. Yeah. Well, um, the Friday franchise, of course, is known for just being two things, and that's gory and horny. So I, every, every character in the Friday franchise is either just going to that camp to have sex, or they're going to that camp. For no other reason, and they just end up dying in a brutal way. Mm -hmm. That's why they just don't like it. That's why who doesn't like it? The NBA. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I think you know, in a lot of horror films, you notice that you know, sex equates death. If you're going to have yeah. sex, or you're going to be horny, or you're going to go after one of the characters, the other characters in the film, uh, you're probably going to die. You know, unless you're the you know the final girl or the final boy, and. and uh, but other than that, you're probably going to die. And you know, it is kind of a reference in, in, in most horror that that's what happens. They connect the two. Yeah, well, um, just talking about, um, what was it? Um, of course, Friday 2. Um, after you've, after you'd, um, done the, um, death scene, did you, did you know what was going to happen in the rest of the film then? Or did you just know up until your character dies and then you aren't told what's going to happen until the actual film releases and that? No, no, I had I'd read the entire script. So I knew what was going to happen throughout. Um, unfortunately, because we're on location, when you're done, you're done. They ship you home because they don't want to pay for your hotel or for your weary cabins or, or, or provide food or anything additional or money for additional days. So you don't have the luxury of sitting around and watching the other performers and, and seeing more of the story unfolding and being filmed. That that would always be a lot of fun, but uh, they don't. So once you're done, you're done. But you've read the whole script, hopefully. So you know what's going to happen. It's funny, though, when I was doing a... Um, I did a soap opera years later in 1991, 92 called Another World to play Dr. J.B. Frame. And I had not seen the soap opera prior, except when I got hired, I watched some episodes uh, that they sent me and also watched on uh, YouTube, et cetera. But I had never really watched it. So I didn't know all the backstory of this guy. So when I was at the studio in those first few months, people would you know, be fans waiting outside the studio in Brooklyn, New York. And people would come up to me and, and tell me, did you know that Jamie did this? And we get all this backstory. Uh, so, you know, this is not what's going to happen, but what had happened. And so yeah. it, was, it was good. It was valuable to, to hear a lot about that. And, and the fans were amazing because they were so involved and, and, and dedicated to the character and the characters uh, on, on this soap and all soaps that um, it's really interesting to, to hear what they had to say about who my character had been. Yeah, well, um, so of course you knew that your um, character was going to die. Is that um, your favorite um, part of the movie, or do you have like a certain favorite scene that you guys filmed? Uh, not my favorite one. It's funny, my parents would never even watch it because I died, which is funny. But uh, you're going to die again in a movie? But um, not my favorite. I think my favorite scene were the group scenes. I really enjoyed those. I also enjoyed the scene with Terry where she said the... Uh, at the lake and she's skinny dipping and I pulled a slingshot back and I hit her in the cheek yeah. and, uh, and then I, yeah. we started running. And so that was fun. We had a lot of laughs yeah. doing it. We, got, we had a great connection. Uh, but the group scenes were also a lot of fun to play off of each other. Again, we were all, you know, pretty young and, and, and not new to acting. We were fairly new to acting. I would say that. Yeah. We were all at the beginning of our careers. And uh, so we were on that same plane. There was no attitude. No one was better than anyone. No one felt superior, which was really nice. So we got along great. And I think, you know, playing off of each other at that point uh, in those group scenes was, was probably my favorite time in this film. 
So they all certainly had a lot of um, chemistry with each other while filming it then. Yeah, all of us, I think. We all did. We enjoyed each other's company. We laughed a lot when we weren't working. We laughed a lot on the set, too, when we were working. Um, but uh, it was just, it was a good time. Again, we were young, just starting out. We all shared the same and same common goal of of doing a terrific job and, 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 and you know, kind of starting our careers here and, and building from there. So we all had great aspirations and goals. Um, you, you said earlier that your parents didn't want to watch you um, die in the movie. Did they actually end up um, watching the film at any point or were they just like, they no, eventually, Yeah, they eventually did. But I think it was uh, later when it was out, you know, on probably VHS back then. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, they eventually did. Yeah, they wanted to see everything I did, but they just couldn't stand the gruesome. They didn't want to see their son get killed. I mean, that, that's obviously um, fair enough. I wouldn't really want to watch like if I had a if I had a kid, I wouldn't really want to watch him like just be murdered and like what while I'm yeah. watching a film. But um, besides from um, then do you get like um. Any of your friends who were like um, coming up to you and just being like, you're in the sequel to Friday the 13th, isn't, isn't that really cool or something like that? Yeah, I mean, it's a long time ago, but I do remember some of my friends saying that because they had also seen the first one. It was a big Paramount movie and did well, of course. So they were uh, excited that I was in it. And, you know, I came from uh, from Troy, New York, and there were there were some actors that actually some very big actors. Maureen Stapleton, I think, gave them there. And one other person, and then John Caglione Jr., who won an Academy Award for special effects makeup. He did Dick Tracy. He won the Academy Award for that and still works with Al Pacino and does amazing things. Um, so there were some of us that came out of Troy, New York, and I'm sure many others that I'm forgetting. Um, so... My friends from that time, you know, it was very exciting to them to have someone who was in the movie and, and something that was a sequel to a, to a film that did well and was and, and uh, either excited them or scared them when they when they saw it. So yeah, yeah, people did enjoy it. Well, um, this isn't really to do with um, part two, but did you hear that they're making a um, TV show about Friday the Thirteenth now? Yeah, Brian Fuller is producing it. I don't know if he's directing it, but he's producing it or creating it. And um, yeah, I heard about it. I would love to be part of it. That would be great. If it, it hasn't started airing, I don't think. Um, no, but, you know, he does well in the first season. Yeah, wonderful to somehow come back as a, a character. Maybe it's a prequel. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, we'll see. Hopefully it'll do well. And hopefully they'll make another movie one day. I know it's in litigation. So movies are difficult to make right now in that franchise, but hopefully that will get settled. Well, I mean, another film was announced by um, Sean S. Cunningham, um, I believe, a f I think a year or two ago, he announced another film that he's working on in the Friday franchise. But um, talking about the show, the first season, I believe, is going to be a prequel. Then they're just going to, I think the plan is what they're going to do is they're going to be working from the stories of the movies and making them as TV show seasons. Oh, interesting. Okay. So maybe they can bring some of us back who haven't died yet, if it's at the right timing. Who knows? I mean, we will see. Like, I mean, what? even if you don't come back as like um, your character, would you, would he want to come back in like a cameo or like maybe play like sure. his father in another scene or like a deleted scene? Well, it's uh, funny you so say that because uh, I had this idea of coming back. They should do a picture of another Friday where a number of us come back and we play our dads or our moms, whichever, you know, accordingly, because we look exactly, you know, except older, you know to ourselves when we were playing those roles. So, you know, people would, would believe we were those parents. And we come back to, you know, reconcile the deaths of our kids, um, you know, to find some closure. And, uh, and then, of course, in typical Friday fashion or in horror fashion, we're getting picked off again one by one. But I think the fans would love that, to see us come back, because they, they knew us and liked us in those films. And now we're older, playing the father or the mother, uh, and coming back to, like I said, for closure 
on our, our own sons or daughters' deaths. So yeah, I think it would be great. Well, I mean, um, if they were to make that, do you think Jason would even have his mask yet? Because in, of course, the film where you um, were in, Jason only had, I believe it was the potato sack. Um, right, it was a sack, sack. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know so, what, what they would do in that, in, in that regard, what they would use at that point. I guess it depends on what point of the story it is um, and how far back they go or if they just create something totally new. Yeah, I mean, they, they could. Um, I mean, it would probably obviously take place after part two because all those characters would have been dead by now besides, I guess, the final girl. But um, yeah. I, I don't know. Um, maybe he'd have his mask by then, but I can't remember. But I think he does actually get it in the third one. I'm not too sure, though. I'm not sure either. I'm really not. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't rewatched really the third one yet, but um, uh, yeah, hopefully um, they do make something like that. And uh, you did say if um, they they would make it, you would be up for doing that. Yeah, totally. I would love to. It was a great part of uh, my life and a wonderful beginning to uh, to my career. And um, it would be great to be asked back. It would be nice. All right. Well, um, thank you for doing this um, interview with me. It's my pleasure. Thank you for asking, Shay. Yeah, um, hopefully um, I will um, talk to you again at some point, or I will see you in um, Crystal Lake when it does come out, if they make a, a season where it's, like, in between two and three and you can play, like, not stand or something. I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Yeah, hopefully. Um, until then, um, as I said, thank you for coming on, and viewers, thank you for watching this video. Um, until next time. Um, Bye-bye.